Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. The topic for today is called Just Do It. Say, Just Do It. Just Do It. And I was going to call it Opportunities, but we wanted to be a little bit more creative. You know, I believe that God is a God of a thousand chances. It's God is, is not a God of a second chance, a third chance. God is an over and over and over opportunity after another after another. Just like the enemy puts, um, has opportunities to sin for us every day, our God has set us up for us to have opportunities, doors that open up, that you and I can take the moment, that you and I can be in tune with the Holy Spirit and see, is this an opportunity of God? And, you know, as I was in, um, in Mexico, Alexis and I, we were sitting, and, and we said, if they asked us to do anything, we are going to see it as an opportunity. We're going we're gonna to believe that God is going to open doors as we are here. So anything that is asked of us, we're going to say yes. Because we felt that God says, I will speak to you, and I want you to be aware of my opportunities. Many times we don't take the opportunities of God because they are disguised. They are disguised in, in your, out of your comfort zone. Most of the times the opportunities of God are disguised in trials, in tribulations. Many of the God opportunities are disguised in chaos. If you read the Bible... And you see every opportunity that the God has given men and every amazing men and women that are, are, their stories are written in the Bible and God given an opportunity to do something for the kingdom. It was through chaos. It was through tribulation. It was through trials. And many times we pray to God. I have prayed out to God. So, I mean, since I became a Christian 21 years now, I pray to God, Lord, open doors for me. Use me today. But when the opportunity knocks on my door, I don't like it. I don't like it because opportunity not only comes disguised in all these troublesome things, but also opportunity, the opportunities of God come with a lot of responsibility. And I don't like responsibility. Can God be responsible for everything? If God has asked me to do something, can God do it? Can God make it, make it so easy for me to recognize it? So as we were sitting and listening and, and being, you know, being just blessed by the people uh, in Mexico, I thought, I heard the voice of God. And so I'm going to say it to you. I'm not going to preach tonight. I feel that this is a prophetic word for your life. A prophetic word is that he doesn't want you to miss his opportunities. I heard the voice of God said, I have presented many opportunities to my children, but they don't recognize it. They do not discern it. They don't see it. Because in our mind, we already have a, a, a perception of how the opportunity would look like or will come into our lap. Many of you are believing for, for, uh, to, to start a business, but you think that proposals or, 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 or prepositions or people coming to get acquainted with you and, and partner with you will come to you. And God says, no, don't be waiting. Don't be waiting for someone to come to you. You go look for those, those opportunities. You need to look and you need to seize the moment that God is saying, I want you to open your hearts and I want you to open your eyes and I want you to see the times that we're living. So I want you to open your Bibles to, uh, let's see what my scripture, my first scripture would be, James 1, 2, 4. But before you go there, I want to tell you what opportunity, uh, what opportunity means. Opportunity is defined as a combination of circumstances favorable for a purpose. That's an opportunity. A, a combination of circumstances. They don't have to be good circumstances, but these circumstances are going to work out for your good. That's an opportunity. But it's, it's, it's a combination of so many things coming together. And the word of God for you tonight is seize the moment. And to seize means to take possession 
of suddenly and by force attack or strike. See, we want the opportunities of God, but we don't want the discomfort. And as I've been meditating and I thought everything that we have, everything that you and I have, if you think about it, if, you, if God healed you, raise your hand. God has healed you in any area. Okay, but how was the opportunity of your wholeness and healing? How did it come by? You had to stand, you had to proclaim the word of God, you had to go against, against the current, and you had to say to yourself, you had to pray, you had to stand, you had to read the word, you had to prophesy to your body, you had to say all those things to be able to walk in your wholeness and in your healing. James, James says this, consider nothing but joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to a spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let the endurance have its perfect result and do a uh, through work so that you may be perfect and completely develop in your faith, lacking nothing. The only time I was thinking about every opportunity that my family and I have had through our 21 years. The opportunity, the first opportunity for for us to be in ministry, well, I say us, but it was actually my husband that was asked to be in ministry. He had a great job. He had a, a, he had a managing job. He, he had a, 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 a amazing figures. I think it was a sixth figure that would be coming to us every month. And then God opened an opportunity for him to work for his kingdom. But the opportunity didn't come and offer to him as, hey, Mauricio, can you come here and can we, we want to give you this position. The opportunity came as a janitor. And he needed to seize the moment. He needed to see, is this a God opportunity or is this, or am I kidding myself? So many times we're asking God and we're, we're Asking and believing God to open doors, but when the door opens and he opens it, we do not like it. And I thought, praise the Lord that we did see the opportunity, that it was an opportunity of God. Hey, it means going back to uh, getting paid minimum wage, which at that time I think it was $7. But see, many of us don't see that as an opportunity. That would be as a lack. This is something that how am I going to do it? So what God is telling you today, what is it that God is presenting in your life? And it's usually, that's just an easy opportunity. But there's opportunities usually that come with chaos. If you think about even people that have uh, leaders of, the, of our society from our history, even recent, if you think about an amazing leader, he, this leader came, came out of a great, a great situation. They, they took the opportunity Usually a leader is not made when everything is wonderful, when everything is comfortable. If you, we have sayings, like if I tell you, like, I have a dream. Who said that? He saw the opportunity. He saw the need. He saw the chaos. And he took the opportunity to do what God has called them to do. And therefore, we still repeat what he said. You know, I think about, I think about, about, about David. David saw the opportunity when he faced his Goliath. Goliath wasn't, was it an opposition? Yes. And sometimes you think you have all these things. I'm thinking about David. I'm thinking about David. He saw there was such a need. He, the father said, hey, David, he was the, 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 least, the least of the kids, right? He was the youngest. He was the one in the field. He was a shepherd. And then his daddy said, hey, I want you to take some tacos to your brother's. And he obeys his father, and he goes, and then he sees his brother and the entire army of God, and they were, being, they, they were, they were in chaos. They were in problems. They were in such a trial that this giant will come. He says every day, they will come every day, and they will defy the army of Israel. And David, David saw it as an opportunity. 
It was a setup from heaven. The giant was a setup from heaven so David can be promoted. I don't know what your giant or what giant problem or trial or chaos of, of difficulty you're facing today. But I, let me tell you that I believe that whatever you're facing today that is so hard for you to move forward, that is so hard for you to believe, I believe that that's a setup, an opportunity from heaven. Can I be honest with you? I don't like the opportunities many times when they come to me. I was like, this is an opportunity for forgiveness? I don't like it. Have you ever had an opportunity to forgive? But like, like a real opportunity. I'm not talking like someone's called you ugly. I'm talking of something, something that hurt you deeply. Right? Do you know that all oh, those are opportunities? Those are opportunities for us to, to see it, to face it. Just like David, he saw his opportunity to be promoted. You know that in the kingdom of God, we don't get promoted the way the world gets promoted. In the kingdom of God, if you want to be exalted, you need to humble yourself. In the kingdom of God, if you want to be prosperous, you need to give. So everything is inverted. But many times we're facing something so giant and it's, it's, we don't even recognize it because we don't like it. This thing is in front of us. This thing is scary. It's actually coming every day and it's talking to me and it's messing with my mind. It's messing with my emotions and I don't like it. And you know what we do? We run away from the battle. And God will tell you this, to this afternoon, I want you to run to the front line. And I want you to face your giant. Whatever your giant is right now, he wants you to face it. He wants you to face it and you need to see it as an opportunity. This is your opportunity to be promoted. This is your opportunity to get complete healing. This is your opportunity to complete, get complete deliverance. I don't know what you're facing, but God is telling you, see it. See this chaos that is in front of you as my opportunity. And I want you to open your eyes. Because opportunity comes with pressure. We read it. It says, count it all joy. I'm, to this day, 21 days into being a Christian, I am yet to say, before I face any opportunity from heaven, every opposition, any difficulty, any chaos, any trial, I am yet, and I'm just being honest, I am yet to, to respond, my first thing, to respond with joy. Usually when you see trial, you see a problem, you're like, there we go again. <laughs> right? But it says, count it all joy. And you know, God wouldn't give us opportunity if he didn't know that we already have what it takes to withstand the heat. God wouldn't give us his opportunities because God is never going to place you in a place for defeat. He never is going to place you, no matter how hard it is, he's never going to place us in a situation that he hasn't given us the way out. You know how I know that? Because he's the way. He is the way. So we know that there's always a way out, but it, sometimes it is just so hard. But you need to know tonight that everything that you need to face your giant, to take this opportunity for a promotion, I believe that God wants to promote us in the kingdom. I believe that God wants to promote you at your workplace. I believe that God wants to promote you in whatever you do. He wants to always upgrade you. We always go from glory to glory to glory to glory. And that's what it means. Glory means, hey, in order to... To, to celebrate a victory, that means we always have to fight something. We have been called to live by faith and not by sight. We have been called and we know, like, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. When I know, Virginia, you are standing, you are fighting, you're going to go to the front line, and you're going to face your giant. You need to remember that it's already in you. God will never put me in this place if he knew that I couldn't make it. So whatever you need for this moment, for your situation, for your opportunity, see it right now. Whatever is your chaos in front of you, see it as your opportunity. Say, this is my God opportunity. Say it. Say it again until you believe it. This is your God opportunity. And we have everything that it takes to conquer 
an opportunity is it's it's a place where you can succeed that's what an opportunity means it's a place of advancement it's a place of promotion that's what an opportunity is but opportunity doesn't come without pressure and let me show you this is a toothpaste we need to wash and brush our teeth no, just kidding. This is a toothpaste. <laughs> and you need to believe that you are the toothpaste and that everything that you need, it's already inside of you. It's inside of you. But I cannot access the toothpaste even if I prayed and I accessed the toothpaste and I would say to this toothpaste, Toothpaste, get into my toothbrush in Jesus' name. <laughs> toothpaste, come out, come forth, and brush my teeth. Toothpaste, I am telling you, I am commanding you to come out. Crazy, right? There is no way that this toothpaste is going to come out. Whatever is inside is going to come out no matter how much. I could be bleeding. I could be uh, praying here 24-7, and this toothpaste is not coming out. So whatever God has put in you, it works from the inside out. The outside, the outside is what's going to make it squeeze you. And God said, don't be afraid when you're being squeezed. Because what's inside of you is what you need to conquer. So sometimes we just want, I just want, I have prayed so many prayers that I'm not even in alignment with God because I've asked God to take me out of, of this place. Lord, I just want you to get rid of all this. Change this thing, Lord. But see, I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to be promoted there. I'm not going to face anything because I hate being uncomfortable. I told the Lord, hey, Lord, I'm here, so everything that you, they ask me, it's an opportunity. Be careful what you tell the Lord and how good you're willing to do it. And I said, I am, because I'm going to be honest with you. I said it because I knew that they were, in my mind, we are so bad. In my mind, I, I thought, they're not going to ask me to do anything. <laughs> so, Lord, it's okay. You ask me, right? I find me in the morning, I go into this tent, and they said, Virginia, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, oh, well, it's tomorrow Sunday. What are you doing? I said. <laughs> that was my response to the pastor, Pablo. What are you doing? Don't ask me. What are you doing? He says, like, uh, we have church service, and I want you to preach. I'll do it. I said, that's a God-given opportunity. And no, I didn't like it. At that moment, I thought, hey, I have to now. And I said, what would you like me to preach? He's like, preach on resurrection, whatever. You I'm like, I don't have a, I never preach here Easter. I don't have a resurrection. I don't have something to translate. And we're like, I will do it. How long do I have? Like, you know, you got it all together, right? How long do I have? 45 minutes plus you can minister. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Turn around, Alexis. <laughs> the opportunity of God is here. And what happens? No, like, Aah! that's what happens. The pressure, it's kind of good. The pressure is like the opportunity of God is here. I thought, well, hey, can you lead us in prayer? Yeah, I can do that. Can you come and lay hands on people? I can do that. Oops, oh, thank you. I even have tissue there, but thank you so much. But I was the opportunity of God. Wouldn't it be nice that they would have told me like two months in advance? <laughs> Just in case, prepare a message. I was like, mm. And then, but mind you, I hadn't slept for 24 hours. And be before that, we were in a congress. Oh, they call it congreso, which is a, what's it called? Conference. Why? And they pick, they pick you up when the roosters are, <laughs> you know? And they drop you off. When there is no more room service. <laughs> we had room service, though. 
And then the time, and you're like, you can't sleep, so I hadn't slept. And I'm like, okay, so by the time I get to the hotel, I am one, it's 6.30, and then I can go to sleep at 7.30. That means I need to sleep at least five hours. So I'm doing all this. And then I put my alarm at 12. My alarm goes off, and I, 10 more minutes, Lord. Another hour went by. Lord, one. Lord, you cry out to God, these opportunities are awesome. But I'm going to tell you that I did it. What I'm trying to tell you is that the opportunities of God, when you welcome the opportunities of God, they are never easy. And you need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. You need to know what God is doing, what God is doing in this time. Every day, I believe that there's opportunities. And, and, and while I was in Mexico, I thought there's so many opportunities that I, ha I have missed. But you know, with God, the beautiful part about God is that he will do a do-over for you. He would say, you know, son, you know, daughter, I know you missed it. But I believe that we're in a season. We have entered a season of God opportunities. And now you need to fully, how, how do you, and, and you may ask me, how do I recognize if I am in God opportunities? How, how do you know if I'm in the season? Matthew 6, says, but seek first the kingdom of God. If we're seeking him first, if we're seeking Jesus first, and I love what Stephen said. This morning he woke up a little bit down. He woke up whatever heavy. And so he had an opportunity either to go with his feelings Oh, he had the opportunity to listen to God, and God told him, no, no, Stephen. This is actually opportunity when we can get intimate in your, in your worst time that you're feeling like crap, right? We can say crap in church. We're feeling like crap. That's the moment that the enemy would tell us, you see, you're having a crappy day. You see, and, and you're singing songs and you're worshiping that you got this, you got that. That's our opportunity to recognize this is either my opportunity to be intimate with my God and allow God to restore me and allow God, God to lift me, lift me up. It's a God that I can hear his voice. And at the end, I'm sure he got up and he had a great day. And now he's able to tell us. See, that was an opportunity, but see, if we don't recognize this is an opportunity, that when you woke up depressed that morning, that's my opportunity to believe that is God really with me. That's my opportunity to believe that the word of God still stands and his word is effective and he never fails. God has an opportunity for you today. I think about another, another uh, person in the Bible. But let me give you what Paul said. Paul was able to recognize his opportunities. I want you to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 9. And then we're going to jump into Jehoshaphat. 1 Corinthians 16, 9 says this. For a great and effective door, a door is an opportunity, has op opened to me. And there are many adversaries. What's an adversary? I looked it up. It means affliction. It means calamity. It means difficulty. And it means catastrophe. He's saying, hey, a great door, a great opportunity has been, it has opened to me, but this opportunity comes with what? With catastrophe. This opportunity comes with calamity. This opportunity comes with all these problems. And then you and I have a choice to just do it. When God gives you an opportunity, just remember Nike, just do it. I love what the Amplified reads the same verse, but this is how the Amplified reads that verse. It says, for a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me there. One great and promising and many adversaries. It is a great opportunity, but it comes with many adversaries I don't know about you but like I said I don't like adversaries I don't like affliction I don't like catastrophe I don't like trials I don't like problems I like comfort but I'm here to tell you that if you're looking for comfort you are going to miss the time that God has for you 
if you're seeking just to be at peace. You know, sometimes when we're just seeking to be at peace, we do nothing. God says, we are the ones who make peace. Make peace. Sometimes we, we get quiet and we, and we retreat in it because we say, you know what, I'm just going to, I want peace in the house. Have you ever said that in your house? You know that you have to confront, you have to say something or with your friendships or whatever. You may be at work and then you know there's something needs to be confronted. But hey, you know what, I'm just a peaceful person. I'm just going to let the peace of God dwell in this place. No, you are running from your responsibility. You are running because it's hard to confront people. You are running because you don't want to say, mm. it's time for us to run to the chaos. You know that adversity means chaos? Chaos. I don't like chaos. We run away from the chaos. No, chaos needs to run away from us. It's time that we, we, we need to be valiant. And I'm preaching to myself. I'm saying, Virginia, you are valiant. You can face this giant you can face this trial you can face this tribulation if i start seeing life like that that everything that is not comfortable everything that comes to me is an opportunity for me to grow oh my goodness we will be so much ahead in life because that's life jesus never promised nothing nothing like wonderful he didn't say you know what as you follow me you're going to have a, just a wonderful road of just sprinkly fun your road is going to be filled with confetti. There's not going to be easy, there's not going to be hard turns. It's not going to be any curves. It's not going to be nothing. It's just going to be awesome. This life that you're going to live with me is going to be just awesome. No, he didn't say that. He said in this life you're going to encounter trials and tribulations. He, that's a fact. That's what he told us. In this life, you're going to encounter trials and tribulations. But you know what? Be of good cheer. Be of a good courage. Be valiant because I overcome for you. I already overcome and overcame for you. So all you need to do is stand and take your position. You know, another, another guy in the Bible that it's, I mean, it's pretty awesome. If you're here every Wednesday, I tell you that everyone is awesome in the Bible and I want to meet them all, right? But yeah, I do. And I want to talk to you about King Jehoshaphat. Have you heard of King Jehoshaphat? For those who love to read the Old Testament, right? I mean, he was a good king. He says that he did everything. You know, he, he pleased God. He, he was gathering his, the people of God, and he was teaching them how to love God, how to obey God. And all of a sudden, God represents him with a great opportunity. I mean, an awesome opportunity came to Jehoshaphat. And I want you to go with me to 2 Chronicles um, 20, or is it 1 Chronicles? I don't remember. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15 to 17. And this is what he says. And read it. Prior to this, I'm, I'm going to be jumping in uh, verses. But before that, the opportunity that God presented him, he presented him with, Hey, Jehoshaphat, I have a great opportunity for you. The great opportunity is that I want you to fight. This is, the, this is what's going to take place. Three armies are going to come against you. Not one, but three. The Moabites, the Amorites, and from Mount Seir. And they said there was a vast army from each of those countries. And this was Israel. They were in a good place. They, they didn't know how to fight. As a matter of fact... Well, I'll get into it. Second Chronicles 20:15 says, and he said, Listen, all of you, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you. This is God. So God is, is told them, This is what's gonna happen. I want you to go fight. This is our opportunity to promote you. This is for your opportunity to for fully get rid of all of your all of your enemies. This is the opportunity to I want to actually enrich my kingdom. So this is gonna be the opportunity. You're going to have to fight three different armies. This is what God is telling him. And King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. Okay, three armies. Not one, three. But this is what God is telling him. Do not be afraid, nor dismay. Because of this great, what? Multitude. For the battle is not yours. So if it's not yours, what do I have to fight it? Right? If I was Jehoshaphat, 
praise God I wasn't leading Israel. I would have been like, okay, hold on. Okay, this is my promotion for my kingdom. And so you said that I don't have to fight this battle. Said, and then so you're going to fight for me. So then, then why don't you get rid of them before they come? Right? Think about it. Lord, if this is an opportunity, why don't you get rid of all of them before? So I don't have to fight. I don't have to be through. I don't have to go through this chaos. But he says, no, 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 Jehoshaphat. This is a setup. This is the opportunity. Because you have what it takes, right? And he says, tomorrow, go down against them. Because they will surely come. You'll be praying, Lord, let them come. I'm going to go show up tomorrow with my army. But Father God, do not let them come. And he's like, no, tomorrow you're going to go. And they will surely come up. Wow. And he wants me not to be dismayed. Right? They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Then again, then why am I going? Right? Talk to me, somebody. Then why am I going? Why, why put me through that? I'm a woman of peace. I'm a man of peace. And why if I don't have to fight? Do you understand that? He says, but you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah, in Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. For the Lord is with you. See, sometimes I thought about Jehoshaphat, and I was telling people, praise God, that Jehoshaphat was able to understand am i not saying oh, i just curse my my movements you see that was an opportunity to promote jehoshaphat as a king that was an opportunity for israel to become very wealthy and jehoshaphat could have said you know if this is mine then why do I, we have to go and I encourage you to read the entire, the entire, entire chapter. Because it says that Jehoshaphat cried out to God. The first thing that he did when we have a God opportunity that seems like this is too much for me, we usually want to retreat. We usually don't want to even fight. We usually don't want to even, even face it. But we can learn from him. What did he do? How am I going to find my opportunities? How am I going to face them? The first thing that you need to do is you need to seek God. But when we're in trial, in a tribulation, many times he is the last one that we seek. We seek advice from other people. We, we go and we want to hear what somebody else, how did they overcome. Many times God is the last one that we seek. But he said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to seek God. And then he says, and everybody went into a fast. And God gave him a, he became, Jehoshaphat came out with this amazing plan. And I like the plan. The plan was, you know what, we're going to get a praise and worship. They're going to be the first ones to go. Wouldn't it be awesome? <laughs> Pastor Felicia, all the, whenever I face something, all the worship is going before me. That's what he said. And that was a revelation from heaven. A revelation from the spirit of God. As, he's, as he was seeking God, he said, okay, this is a God opportunity because God is telling me not to be dismayed. Okay, but how am I going to do it? The God, said, God says that I have to go, but how, how do I have to go? He says that I have to face them, that tomorrow I better show up with my army. And then he says, you know what, I'm going to send my singers. He says that he sang the singers, the worshipers. Wouldn't that be, and if, if you think strategy for war, they're like, okay, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. that's really dumb, right? No. He says, first, the praises are going to go forth. You're not going to talk about the oppositions. You're not going to talk about the army. You're not going to open your mouth about how many are these enemies are in front of me. No, we're going to set the praise and worship, and they're going to lead us into battle. I don't know about you, but when I'm facing something big, sometimes I don't want to worship. That should be 
number first. Num number, number one is we seek God with all of our hearts. How, how do I do this? Number two is like I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him because my praise and my worship is going to ambush my enemy. And he says that as worship was going forth, as they put the, and then the army was second. And as they were worshiping God, as they were honoring God, he says that as the people were praising and worshiping, it brought such confusion to the enemy that they started to kill one another. Do you understand what God is saying to us as you seek me and as you put me first and you position yourself? What's our position? Our position is that we are worshipers. Our position is that he is our only idol. We have other things that we run to when we are, have a God opportunity. I'm talking a God opportunity that you need to do something like, hey, right now I have an opportunity to forgive somebody. Right now I have the opportunity that I can reconcile with that person. Something that's so out of your comfort, so out of your like, oh, this has to be done in the spirit. Oh, I will never be able to take God's opportunity. So what do we do? We seek God. And then we worship. And I wrote it down. You wrote it down. We're going to seek God and we're going to worship and we're going to praise. And the Lord reminded me. You know that, that verse, the entire thing, God gave it to me when Isaac, when I was, I was pregnant. And, and they told us, you need to terminate this pregnancy. And, and at that time, I think we've been in the church for three years. And a friend of mine said, I want you to read that chapter and God is going to speak to you. And I read it. And because I was in so much fear, she called me within three hours and she said, what did God say to you? He's not speaking to me. But then as I, as I calm my heart, because God is the only one who can calm the storm that is inside of you right now. He can calm your storm. And you know how he's going to do it? He's going to use your own voice. Your own voice. We wait, I wish somebody would sing over me. I tell Alexis, can you sing over me? And I'm serious. Tell God to sing over me. God hasn't allowed it yet. Because he wants me to open my mouth. We don't need to wait for someone to sing over us in, our, in the midst of our chaos, in the midst of our opportunity. You open your mouth and you start praising God. And you don't feel like it, but you praise God either way. And that's what we need to do. I praise God and I praise God. And, and when they told me that, and I said, okay, I need to praise God. And I was like, praise you, Lord, and praise you, Lord, and praise you. Until that praise becomes like who you are because that's who you are. God already wired us for worship. God already wired us for intimacy. So it's in us. It's in the, it's in the toothpaste. It's not in the outside. And so that's what he did. He prayed. And all of a sudden, now they're all like fighting. They're killing each other. And then they said the people of Mount Seir, they said, oh, my God, they're killing each other to the point that all of them killed each other. Do you understand? And I believe that God is speaking to us today, whatever we're facing that is demonic, that is chaotic, that is so difficult. He wants us to praise him and let our praises defeat our enemy. Let our praises defeat our enemy. That he's so confused. He's so confused. Like, what the heck? Virginia should be cursing right now. No. Virginia should be losing it. This is what she usually does. She loses her grip. But she's not losing her grip. He's not losing his grip. He's worshiping. Why is he worshiping? To the point that we don't stop until we see our enemies defeated. And I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about what we're facing. Until we see it defeated. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.